Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Microsoft Excel to figure out the future value of an ordinary annuity. Let's uh, get into it using an example. Let's suppose that you have decided to put away $2,000 in your investment account every year for the next five years. So this is an annuity. Why? Because you're going to be putting away $2,000 every year so it's a constant cash flow at regular intervals for a fixed number of years that's the very definition of an annuity uh, you will make the first deposit one year from today now this is the part that makes it an ordinary annuity because the first deposit is going to happen one year from today the question is how much will you have in your account by the end of five years if the annual interest rate is three percent and so if you try to depict this on a timeline that basically here you are today here's the end of year one which is where you're going to make your first deposit then second then third then fourth and fifth so from a conceptual standpoint this first 2000 is going to grow for four years this next 2000 is going to grow for three years this next 2000 is going to grow for two years this next 2000 for one and finally this last 2000 is not going to earn any interest rate at all and so you're interested in answering you know how much are you going to have by the end of five years if all of that happens now there are two ways in which you can try to do this in excel one is the long-winded way in which you go to your lectures you say look i know the future value of ordinary annuity formula looks like this and so all that i try to do is just replicate this or try to implement this in excel which you can do so basically your cash flow c is two thousand dollars your interest rate is three percent your t is five years so here's how you go about it you say equal to two thousand dollars which is my c multiplied by and then here you have to be careful you first open the big bracket and then first you solve the one plus r raised to the power t so one plus 0 0.03 raised to the power five uh, you saw so, and then subtract uh, you subtract uh, one from it and then that, that so this is why as you can see I had to, started this expression with two brackets because I want to solve all of this together and then so this is so all of this stuff in the bracket is just one plus r raised to the power t minus one I first need to multiply it by c which I am and then I'll take this whole expression so I'll close this which means I need to start one more bracket over here I know, I know, it's not pretty. But then I'll divide this by R, which is 0 0.03. And so when I do this, I get 10,618.27. So this is how much I will have at the end of five years. Fortunately, there is a more convenient way of doing this in Excel, and that is to use the equal to future value formula, FV, uh, FV, which it returns the future value of an investment, which is basically what we're trying to do. And so if you open the bracket here, the first thing that this formula asks you to do is tell me the rate. Well, that's the easy part. It's 3%, so 0 0.03. Please make sure you enter this as a decimal, not a, not, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do just three. If you're inclined to write three, write 3%. So that is still a decimal, okay? So 3%. Number of time periods. How many times are you making the deposit? Five times, five years, so five. And then the payment. Payment is Excel's way of asking you, is there a constant cash flow here? Yes, there is. You're making a constant deposit of $2,000 uh, every year. And in this case, you might want to enter this uh, $2,000 as a negative. And the reason for that is that this is an outflow happening. This is money going down or out of your pocket uh, so th because it's going into an investment account. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, uh, but it's it, it, it helps to sort of understand things from cash outflow and inflow perspective. So so enter the payment as negative 2000. Uh, this is the constant cash flow that's going in. So this is the constant payment. Now, uh, when you put comma, it asks you, is there any present value? No, there's no present value involved. Everything that you that is involved over here is captured by this $2,000 payment over here. There's nothing in addition to that. Basically, you entering five here in this expression, and then 2,000 here basically is t saying everything, that there are five 2,000s involved, there's nothing else. And then when you, so, so basically just go past this, and now when you press comma, this is the important part. 
Excel basically asks you, are these deposits being made at the end of the period or at the beginning of the period? And we know that each deposit here is being made at the end of the period. The first deposit was at the end of year one, end of year two, end of year three, so on and so forth. So uh, you can enter zero here if you wanted to, but even if you did not, that's fine because that's the default setting in Excel anyway. So even if you did this and did not enter anything, Excel will understand that you are talking about end of year cash flows. So that's the default setting. And so now if you enter, you get the exact same answer, which is 10,618.27. As you can see, this is far easier because if you look in the formula, all you had to do was enter the rate, the number of time periods, and then the constant payment or the constant deposit that you're making. And so this is how more conveniently you can figure out the future value of an ordinary annuity in Excel.